want to give him a two minute warning? I just did. And we've got one or two nice surprises for you. <laughs> David, okay. don't forget that they may zig. I don't do that sort of thing. No, but they may. It's against my nature. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Did you walk into me? <laughs> anyway, look, all I want you to do oh, yeah. is down well and enjoy yourself, because I'm going to. And I think it's about time we got on with the show. Thank you very much. Ladies 
see before you tonight a broken man. Oh. Much more broken than that. Oh. Oh. I hear you say, how can this not be? Is he not handsome, a man in his early forties? Yeah. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I am broken. Now the year, it is 1941. And we've been occupied by the Germans now for about a year. It is not good. <laughs> but we are getting by. Now me, I am ready at one. And this, this is my cafe. <laughs> Germans, who I have to be nice to, and my wife, who I have to be nice to, <laughs> and my serving girls, Mimi, <laughs> and Yvette, <laughs> who I enjoy being nice to, and my wife isn't about. <laughs> Upstairs is my wife's mother, <laughs> who nobody enjoys being nice to, <laughs> a fairly normal cafe in wartime France, you might say. Do not be deceived in my cellar. I might be too pretty chairman. <laughs> Hello! Hello! Oh! If the Germans find them, I will be shot. In my kitchen is hanging a decaying Knockworth sausage, which contains the priceless portrait of the ball of Madonna with the big by that master knock a bait of uncle. I'm hiding it for the Germans. If the resistance finds out, I will be shot. If my wife finds out I am having an affair with Mimi, I will be <laughs> shot. If Mimi finds out I'm having an affair with Yvette, she will shoot me. As will Yvette if she finds out about me. My life expectancy, <laughs> about the same as an overripe camembert. Rene! Rene! Here comes the wife. Do not laugh. <laughs> laugh? <laughs> Why are you wearing on your head red rolls? Because they were out of the oven and it seems a shame to waste them. Are you going to be putting them on the table? Well, for the Germans, yes. Well, I <laughs> hope you soon be set. We are open. Oh, that is my mother. It is time for a supper. Your mother? She eats more than the chicken. Shut up, you old bat! Do not talk to my mother like that. One day you and I will be old and up in the bedroom banging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not if you're wearing those clothes. Oh, Renee, why can it not be between us like it used to be between us? What are you trying to say? When we first met, you were so in love with me. You said you could not even sing straight. I could not. That is why I married you. You weren't able to take your eyes off me. Not because changed. Now there is coldness between us. I lie awake at night thinking you might touch me. Why well, lie awake at night thinking the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> and really, why do you have all these headaches? Well, if he's worried, my love, hiding the airmen for the resistance and the fainting for the Germans, it preys on my mind. I am not like you, Edith. I look at you. Your firm face framed with bridge rolls, and I realize that I am not half the man that you are. <laughs> I am a coward. If I am tortured, I will crack. I know this, my poor, weak, feeble husband. But I have the answer. So that you will have one less worry on your frail, drooping shoulders, I have moved the real painting of the fallen Madonna with the big boobies from the cellar to a safe place known only to me. After the war, we can sell it. What if the, the colonel and the captain want it back? Because they cannot have it. What if they torture me? You do not know where it is, so you cannot tell them. But what if they torture you? I'll tell them that you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is supposed to put my mind at rest. And what about a forged painting in the sausage in the kitchen? We cannot be shot for having a forged painting. Just leave the 
worrying to me, Rene, and maybe tonight when we are lying in bed a sort will come into your mind. He does something about the fallen Madonna with the big boobies. <laughs> Ooh, so these tables must be prepared. Yvette, you are neglecting your duties. See to the tables. <coughs> come in, Mama. As you see, just an everyday story of war in France. Well, there is only one way that a Frenchman can rid himself of his worries. The coast is clear. Oh, René. <laughs> oh, Yvette. Oh, René. Kiss me, hold me, do all those things to me that drive me wild with desire. If I must. <laughs> do not worry, your wife is not looking. Yvette, we are open. I cannot do all of those things. Just do some of those things. Oh, effect, my little letters. My big gherkin. My little cauliflower. My big carrots. My little cabbage. My enormous cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> that is all I have time for, but I will be left off. When are you going to tell your wife about us? When the war is over, then by telling you from South America. <laughs> Now, hurry up and set the tables. And just remember, only one pat of butter. We are running short. <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> oh, we are lord. Can you help me? Just wasting 30 seconds. <laughs> now, listen very carefully. I will say this only once. The Germans have been intercepting the signals you have been sending to London from the cafe. I see. Uh, goodbye, Yvette. Uh, goodbye, Michelle. Say farewell to my wife. Where are you going? I think I'll try for the Spanish border. It's only 600 miles. If I run all night and crawl all day, I should be there by Christmas. We have only intercepted the messages. They do not normally come from here. We have to change the frequency. You will be given another radio. I do not think it's a good idea, Michelle. I mean, couldn't you send messages from your place? Oh, the Germans watch my windows day and night as binoculars. I'll buy you some curtains. No, the arrangement has already been made. Monsieur Leclerc will deliver the new radio to you. He will be disguised as a parrot salesman. <laughs> That should make him merge into the background all right. I mean, how many parent sales we've seen this morning about France in more time? Very few. That is why you will recognize him. He will be here very soon. He was then here to make contact with London and arrange for the departure of the airmen you have been hiding. Now I will disappear through the front door and the phantom into the night. The Germans are in the streets. Then I will disappear through the back door like a phantom into the night. Yeah. If there's any Germans out there, he could disappear through the trap door in the cellar like a phantom into the night. Yvette, look after the cellar. Check my wife's not coming. I must go to the larder to see if the brie is young and firm. Wait! This, of course, is a white lie. <laughs> I am not interested in the breed. I'm going to check if Mimi is young and firm. <laughs> <laughs> on the arm. <laughs> Swap them on the curry cake, they do not show up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Renee. Do 
not start until you have got on the stool. <coughs> Now, <laughs> for me need to feel your firm young body through your thin blouse against my stiff apron. Oh, <laughs> my, my carrot, my butt on the swoon. It's been colder in the larder than I thought. Uh, Ernie, does it upset you that men pay me for my favours? Oh, it is warm in me. You must have quite a bit. Put aside by now. I put the money in my stockings under the bed. It is nearly full. Just think if you had longer legs, how rich we would be. <laughs> you have a special booking tonight with the Colonel. Not the flying helmet. I am afraid so. And the wet celery? No, rhubarb. Rhubarb? Not raw rhubarb. <coughs> Stew. And do not forget the egg whisk. We shall lie back and sink off France. Very big France. By the way, what does the colonel do with the egg whisk? I do not even know what he does with the celery. I wear the flying helmet back to front. <laughs> Maybe such, such a sensitive child. Be nice to him. See if you can wheedle from him a little extra butter, paraffin, and cigarettes. A cork tip, the others are making me cough. <laughs> It 
It is I, Capitano Alberto Bertarelli. The Italian Capitan with a dead chicken on his head. Ah, oh, yes. Enter! <coughs>
Are you standing comfortably? Nine. So life will begin. <laughs> over him. You mean you studied under him? Oh, I studied over him. He was tied to a chair at the time. Carefully, I find you so exciting. May I kiss you? Just a little one. Unfortunately, von Schmeling has a history of run-ins with the Gestapo. This is why he wears an eye patch on the wooden leg. When did he arrive? Tonight, on the train from Berlin. Accordingly, it is my intention to visit the cafe of René Atois in order to recover the priceless portrait of the fallen Madonna with the big boobies, which is concealed in his kitchen. In a knockabout sausage. Yeah, this also is correct. You will accompany me there. Yes, thank you. Now, did you lock the door when you came in? Of course, Hedwig. Oh, good. And are you wearing the black underwear? Yes, Hedwig. It's a little swastika, it's all embroidered around the edges. Yes, Hedwig. Good. So then I will play for you the violin. The violin. <laughs> oh, do not worry, you can join in. Ha! Nein, zwei, drei, vier!
map. She tried to knee round the bend. I suppose you would like to hear some more. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let me think. What shall I sing? No, no, do not spoil that. All we would leave that wanting less. <laughs> yeah. Yvette, why for the colonel and the captain? Mm. Oh. Yvette, tell Rene I would like a word with him. Of course, colonel. How young you look tonight, see? You see, Captain, it is working. Also, it is molting. <laughs> Jump in, stop playing piglets. And what's the rabbit? Oh, I thought it was veal. It had been run over by a tank. <laughs> now you don't have to mention it, there was a hint of diesel. Have you got something more tender, like a chicken run over by a bicycle? No, but for you, I would have sight him first thing in the morning. All the ladies are driving them insane. But I think you want it. Already to pay? What? <laughs> <laughs> the bill, Colonel. Oh, oh, no, no, Rene. I have serious news. A new district commander is arriving. Is he a nice man like you? He has a reputation for being utterly ruthless. I hope you are not hiding any British airmen any longer. Oh no, Colonel. You are my word as a Frenchman. Mm, that is what is worrying me. <laughs> the Colonel, he think if he torture you, you will tell him about our painting. But I do not know where it is. Rene, it is in your stuff. Oh, of course. I'm so used to saying I do not know where it is that it just came out. It is perfectly safe in the Knockworth sausage. After the war, I will give it to you. We want it now. What? It is too dangerous to leave with you. We are going to hide it under Captain Alberto's bed. I see some woman to drink urgently. Do not go away. Mimi, cognac. One cognac, Mila. Edith. Edith, they want the painting. But they cannot have it. But they want it now. I'm sorry. I know how to take their minds off it. I will put in their drinks a resistant suicide pill. <laughs> Germans in my cafe. I mean, it's very bad for business. Now go over there and be nice to them. <coughs> Good evening, Colonel. Good evening, Captain. May I sit at your table? We should be honoured. Come, you put up upon my knee your little bum and don't breathe on my meadows or you'll make them go rusty. <laughs> She beautiful girl, she look like a little dog. She look like a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> to pay for it. This is my new waitress, Mimi Le Bonk. She has been Le Bonk. That is a funny name. She has been put here by the resistance as my bodyguard. She's very small. He means small. Mimi, show him. Not on me! I have good news for you. New Rudio is ruddy and will be delivered by the undergrind very shitly. Well, I hope you can't be passing back through that door very shitly on your way out. <laughs> what about my drunk? If you stay in, here any longer, someone's going to hear that dreadful French accent and realise that you are a British agent. 
No one has complained so far, and I have for you another massage. He has another message. <laughs> Quickly, you will get us all killed. When the time is root, the British airmen will be taken by Troom to the Arbor, where a smell boot will be waiting by a disused dick. <laughs> a disused dock. <laughs> and now I will disappear like a phantom into the newt. Edith! We have got to give the colonel the sausage with the cake from the cellar. He's not having it and that is flat. Edith, I must have it, please. I will give you it. It's under your nose. What it is here in the cafe? Yes, but you will not find it. Rene, what are you doing on the floor? It's in the head. <laughs> <laughs> I have dropped a crisp. They are a very short supply, you know. <laughs> Ballots! Stop to us! Ballots! We'll buy a bag of cockatoos. Oh, a bag of cockatoos. Come to the bar, parrot and cockatoos. Ballots! Go to your little bit from Africa. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? I brought for you the new radio so that you may transmit the messages. Where is it? <laughs> Where is what? <laughs> the radio! <laughs> this is not a real cockatoo. It is a dead cockatoo. <laughs> it has been stuffed by the undertaker. Is that what killed him? The cage has a false bottom. Underneath are the workings of the wireless and the speaker. When London wishes to call you, well, the cage will be. This is very sophisticated. How do I speak to London? The microphone is in the cockatoo. Remove it from the cage and I will give you instructions. <laughs> to speak, press the usual button. Where is the usual button? He's disguised as the parson's nose. <laughs> you mean to say I have to press the parson's nose every time I want to speak to London? It is foolproof. <laughs> I can't see it. It's a very private part. He has covered it with feathers. <laughs> I have found it. <laughs> to speak, where's art? Is he Coggins? I am not surprised. His eyes are watering also. <laughs> My batteries will be dropped tonight by parachute. London will call you to let you know where and when. Thank you, Parent Seller. <coughs> I will take this one. It's such a lovely bird. You have chosen well, Patron. <laughs> would, uh, would your girls like a cock or two? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> You've the colonel of the sausage belonging to her food, which is hanging in the kitchen. That sausage contains the forgery. Rene! Uh, come in, Colonel, we're just discussing the menu. That sausage contains the painting and it's hidden in our kitchen. Does it have a swastika on it? Yes. Well, I will nibble it off and blame the mice. Oh. Sorry for the delay, Colonel. Have you got for us the sausage? My wife will bring it up in a minute. <laughs> By the way, how is the war going? Oh, it is all over, by the charity, really. We have conquered Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, North Africa, France. Up to now, we have conquered five countries. Another two, and you could be in the final. Penny, Lieutenant Gruber has just put his little tank outside. Oh, my. This is the one that fancies me. <laughs> Fresh air. Um, 
How do you fancy a spin in my little tank? I left it. You must not waste your precious teas on me. Mm. Nonsense. The fresh air would do you good. Flat <coughs> out with my ventilators wide open. <laughs> and be a most exhilarating experience. <laughs> and Renee, you um, could stop for a little picnic. Mm. <laughs> I will have to think about it. <laughs> I have been out to the office quite a lot lately. Um, may I have another drink, Rene? Of course. Oh, and Rene, do take one for yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant. Why did you want to get in touch? I am not hearing you. Oh, sorry. Why did you want to get in touch? <laughs> I wonder if you wanted to place a table by the window on Saturday night. Oh, no. <laughs> I think I would prefer to be here at the bar with you and we can have little uh, chats by your virtue. Are you connected with Oh yes. I do have a cousin who's ever so friendly with Hitler's butler, you know. <laughs> oh, what about? Are you getting a massage? Yeah, I think perhaps I am. <laughs> Certainly, I mean, it is a bit public here. I know what you require, and I plan to drop them at half past twelve. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Uh, I, hope, I overcharge you. Oh, oh, I have a dozen eggs for you. Black market, you know. I did not want anyone to see me giving them to you. That's why I'm dropping them behind the barn. <laughs> that is most thoughtful of you. Uh, Renee, <coughs> is there anything I could do for you in return? I am sure we are on the same way. <laughs> 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 Send some peasants out into the street to make room for you. I do not detain you. Detain me, but I have done nothing. <laughs> do not get your knickers in a twist. My companion and I merely wish to sample a little wine. <clears throat> wine for the nice Gestapo gentleman. <laughs> Please sit down, I have flick. <clears throat> and to recover my sausage, which hangs in your kitchen. Your sausage, which hangs in my kitchen. My sausage, which hangs in your kitchen. The one with a little sausage stamped on it. <laughs> Get it, Fabia says survive. Your sausage, Colonel. Oh, my sausage from the cellar. Is this the one with the painting with the bigger the boobies? Shut up! Uh, Edith, Herr Flick of the Gestapo is here. Good evening, Herr Flick, and welcome. Herr Flick wishes to reclaim his sausage. The one that is hanging in your kitchen. The one that's hanging in the kitchen. The one that is hanging in the kitchen. He wants the one that's hanging in the kitchen. <coughs> now, for those of you who may have lost the thread of this tapestry of intrigue, <laughs> I would like to point out that I cannot give Beverly his sausage containing the real portrait of the former Madonna with the big you-know-what, because that sausage has been placed on the table of the colonel and the captain by my dim wit of a wife, <laughs> leaving me one sausage short, and not to put too pie fine a point on it in dead stock. I have now got to break into the butchers to obtain another knockwork, 
and for this I shall need a diversion. Of course, I could ask my wife to do a tantalizing strip tease, uh, but I would not wish this on anyone, <laughs> not even the enemy. <laughs> so I will ask for the next worst thing. <clears throat> Edith, Edith, you must do your cabaret, but not quite yet. <laughs> my cabaret? Well, you never asked me to do my cabaret. Well, it is an emergency, and we've been inundated with requests. Oh, how exciting! I will get into my costume right away. Hurry up, Edith. <laughs> you do not wish to stay, will you kindly produce a sausage? But, uh, Flick, it would be such an honour to have a member of the Gestapo in my establishment. A dinner is on the house. Free wine and champagne. Uh, Mimi, champagne. Nothing but the best for the Gestapo. <coughs> what do you think? Shall we stay? It is up to you, Herr Flick. What a splendid way to buy the way happy hour. It is settled then. It is good to see you are very cooperating with us, Renny. Now, do you wish, wish to sit facing the bar or the room? As long as I am facing you, Herr Flick, nothing else matters. Of course. Then sit, and I shall from time to time present my profile for you to admire. <laughs> <laughs> What, well, dear? With all these Germans, does she not realise I have a business to run? Do not worry, she will be in disguise. Oh, oh some disguise! <laughs> Lady, I kiss her your hand and I kiss her your hand. Let me kiss her your lips. <laughs> 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 Behave yourself. There is nothing but a cheap woman of the streets. I know, but how cheaper? And in which street are? <laughs> Are you going to buy a naughty girl a drink? Michelle, you will get us all killed. People never suspect the obvious. For heaven's sake, get out of here. Now, René, listen very carefully. I will say this only once. <laughs> My girls will collect the batteries for the radio tonight. They will bring them to you. You will radio to London and inform them that the airmen will be at the rendezvous in the arbor tomorrow. Michelle, I cannot do this for you. I can't even work the parrot. Does it have teasing troubles? Near at the other end, I think. <laughs> Keep trying. I must go. Good, you give him our place a mad name. Bad name. Farewell, warm-hearted lady of the night. <laughs> so young to be a colonel. <laughs> Don't be deceived, he has a smaller wiglet. <laughs> oh, this secret is safe with me. Ladies.